What's up everybody, I'm Shane from Silverstein and you're watching Project Green Room. Yeah, it's been overwhelming. Uh, and it's, it's always weird when you put a new record out and, and you never know, uh, especially with us, it's our fifth album. Right. So we have a lot of material, so when we're trying to pick a set list, um, you know, the tendency, for us at least, is we're like, well, we don't want to disappoint our fans that keep coming around, so we want to play some old songs for them, right? But you'd be shocked how many people are like, oh, you only played like, you only played like five new songs. We're like, well, yeah, five new songs is, you know, almost half the half album. Down. And they're like, oh yeah, I just really want to hear this one and this one. And people kept saying this, and we're like, all right, well, I mean, we're gonna play, you know. So we started swapping out and playing all different new songs, and it's just really great when when your new material is the stuff people are the most excited about. Because with a lot of bands, I know even personally, some of the old punk rock bands I used to listen to, right. that I'd get a little bummed out if I went to their show and they played <laughs> new song. Yeah. So as a music fan, that's where I relate. But it's great that our fans are are really open-minded and stoked on our new stuff. So it's a good and thing. I do believe, and with each record we've improved, you know, and, and so, I don't, when I say that, I believe that, and I really feel that way, and I, I really honestly feel that way, and so many bands say that, and I don't know how many of them mean it, but I mean it. Yeah, well, well, Rescue was less stressful, way less stressful, but the biggest reason it was less stressful is because we had way more time to make it, write it, and record it. We we actually recorded Rescue twice, pretty much, right. because we demoed the whole thing. And we and when we say demoed it, we didn't just play it in our practice space live. Like we recorded it. And uh, if you listen to the or the, the deluxe version, there's there's like bonus tracks. Yes. And you hear some of the demos. Some of the demos sound almost as good as the record, because that's you know that's just what we were going for when we made the demos was like perfection. So when you do that twice around, you have almost double the time to kind of ref, like write it fix it, make it perfect. Whereas with Shipwreck, it was like, here's your here's your slot, yeah. you're writing it, and you're recording it. And we really, I don't want to say we bit off more than we could chew, because I really, I'm really happy with that record and everything about it. But yeah, there were there was a lot of like nights I was up not sleeping and trying to think about this character I made and trying to like get in his, it was fucked. Like, you know when you hear about actors getting into character? Yeah. It was almost like that, where I was I was having issues in my life. Like, like I never have trouble sleeping. I couldn't sleep. Kind of similar to the character. It was really really weird you're, writing that. You were being the character. It, it was the a character. little bit. I really that record really consumed me. Um, but in the end, when I listen back to that record, I think it's I think it's I'm really really proud of it. So uh, uh, it, it was different. It was way different approach. I've I've always done decently well in school, okay. you know, like in English class and stuff. Right. So, and it was always I was always kind of a, I'll write the essay the night before kind of guy, you know. And then it's like oh I got an okay mark, all right, whatever. College. So that's kind of you know. So um, with writing, and initially when I was playing in in a, like a punk band, I didn't ever want to be the singer. I just wanted to play guitar. But then the other guys when I was a kid, no one would sing or could could carry a tune at all, and I was like okay. So I just did it. And then what comes with when, when you're the singer, generally, in most bands, it's your responsibility to write the lyrics too. So I just started writing. And, and I mean, so I never consider myself to be a great lyricist or anything. And, you know, I, my first band I started when I was 12 years old. So I'm, I'm 30. So I've been doing it a long time now. So it's, I guess it's just like, over time, you know, you get better and you, you realize. And, and my style of writing has definitely changed. Because when I was an angry kid, punk rock kid, it was like, Fuck this and fuck that in every song, and, life. and that was that kind of attitude, and like you know, fuck the government, and that that was really like the things I was talking about then, and then I kind of got into a period where it was more about the you know emotional and the more of the that side and more about the vibe of the music, and now I think I'm at a point where it's a bit of a combination of my younger days and, and my you know my twenties. So it's it's uh it's I don't know I. I I, I enjoy writing lyrics, but at, at the same time, I am still kind of have stuck in my own ways of like I'm gonna write the song the night before I I just record it maybe right. sometimes because sometimes I do my best work when I have a little pressure. Got that like college university mentality. Yeah, pull an all nighter. Right? Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> just a lot of pent up anger deep inside <laughs> One us. Day it's gonna snap. Exactly, like REM, right? And they yeah, break up after ago. thirty years. <laughs> we were joking that that like we wonder we wonder what it was, and we were just we were just kidding around. We were like, yeah, they're probably riding in their van. And Michael Stipe was like, hey man, could you pass me a bottle of water? He's like, fuck you, man. I'm I'm sick of this shit. I'm out of here. It's probably just something like that after thirty years, like the little littlest thing. But no, in all seriousness, um, we I mean we have respect for each other. We let each other, we let our, our, we don't call each other out. We let people do their thing. We all, we all are guilty of mistakes. So we all just kind of let things go. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I've seen bands, this is not one or two times, this is like hundreds of times. Bands come off stage and they get backstage and they're just like, oh, you fucked up this, oh, it was a horrible show. And it's like, everybody has bad shows. Right. You know what? No one in the crowd even fucking noticed. It was fine. So just, let it go and improve the next time. And when, but when you have those little arguments, that's when people start, you know, forming this animosity towards each other. So that's what we've always been just really chill about everything. And I think also we've we've always had the same goals as a band from our inception, which is basically just to have a good time, um, write music we we let we want to make, and we've really stuck to that. And and I think. Part of it is our diversity in music too, where we can play softer stuff, heavier stuff, so everyone's kind of happy musically, I think, too. Yeah, it's super important, man. I'm glad you mentioned it, because um, I always talk, you always ask, well, why are you on Hopeless when you're on Victorian? And they understand, they run a label for the same reason that, that we, uh, run a, we run a band. We are a band because for fun first. There's a, a great other ways they could make money in this world. The music industry is not exactly the top of the list, you know, but they do it because it's something that they, they're passionate about. And they, they do that first and, and then they run their label as a business second. You know, the same way we run our band like that. We, ha we don't have jobs. We have to make money in the bands. So we have to be smart about that. But at the same time, we're in this band to have a good time. So the parallels there with, with with their label and our band are very, very, we're very, very on the same page. Um, and with the charity stuff is great. We've done tons of charity work with um, uh, organizations like Amnesty and uh, um, Skate for Cancer and PETA and the list goes on and on. Or so, Take Action Tour. Take Action Tour, absolutely. So um, that's something that's important to us too. So, you know, it's just a really good fit and, and they understand that. I mean, we, we're doing a record right now. I don't know if I can talk about it yet, but we're doing this, this really cool record. We want to do it for fun. They're giving us a little money to, to record it. We're, none of us, we're not going to make any money doing this, but it's something that we believe in, they believe in, it's going to be fun and put it out with the help. <sighs> I think we've really tried not to follow the trends. You know, I remember back in maybe it was like 05 or 06, it seemed like every band was using uh, like synths. Just this like six month period, every record would come out, and it was because everybody liked Head Automatica at that point, or, or there was like a bunch, you know, this like one record will get made and everyone will try to duplicate it, and there'll be this like weird kind of everyone copying everyone. Beating hearts, baby. And, and yeah, like don't get me wrong, I love Head Automatica, but when everyone's trying to do that, it gets really stale and really old really fast. And generally, what happens is by the time everyone does it, it's overdone. And then, so we've just basically we've tried to stick to our influences that we've always had, and and just you know, make Silverstein records, not try to make other people's records. So that's uh, I think one way. And it's worked because there's still a lot of kids out there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, like like popularity is a weird thing, and, and you know, trends come and go, and, and people call us whatever kind of band or whatever scene we are supposed to be in and really that doesn't matter to us so much at all you know we, we just make the records we make and we don't want to be whatever scene we just want to be our own thing you know our own band and have our own fans and, and that's fine I mean it's it's I understand why they're there because when I was a kid there it was and I think it was maybe even worse because I was really like punk rock was all I cared about so there was skate punk and then there was like pop punk, but then some bands that were pop punk weren't pop punk because they were different. And then there was hardcore punk, but then there was hardcore, but that was different <laughs> for whatever reason. Sometimes it was the band bands were were different almost just because of the clothes that they wore, the bands they toured with. 
back then. You know, yeah. the difference between I, I can't think of specific bands, but you'll have this band or this band's straight edge, and this band's not. Exactly. Well, this band's a hardcore band. This band's a punk rock band. When really they're playing the same music. So so that's always been there, you know, and, and it's not going to go away. Um, I forget when, what, like, kids come up to me and they'll say the most funny shit, like, you listen to Deathcore, man? <laughs> What's Deathcore? I don't know what that is. Is that, like, death metal hardcore? I don't know. You know, like, Deathcore, man. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I like, I like metal and I like hardcore, yes. So, yes, I think I do. But I, I don't know. It changes so fast. You know, exactly. you can't, you can't even, you can't even know what's coming. We're gonna be doing another U.S. tour next year, uh, which I'm really stoked about. It's gonna get announced super soon. Probably by the time this is airing, right. people will know about that tour uh, with some of our friends, our, our European tour. Uh, and then yeah, we're just trying to do go to a bunch of countries we haven't been before. Like earlier this year, we went to Southeast Asia was crazy. Um, we're trying to go to like China. We, you know, we want to go to all these places right. we've never been. Thousands of people are at the airport waiting for the band. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, insane, man. They don't speak the language, but they know every word. You'd be surprised how well people speak English really? in the rest of the world. It's shocking, man. Especially when you go to certain places, um, uh, and like in Scandinavia, like Norway, Sweden, okay. Denmark, and they aren't speaking English to each other all the time. But you wouldn't even know. I have, I have more trouble. Uh, understanding people on like Interstate 81 at the Gap <laughs> at the uh, 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 truck stop yes. than I do in people in Sweden. Sometimes. That's not so, English. That's uh, yeah, you know. So uh, it's uh, it's funny, man. But, but no, it's 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 always funny too when you're in another country and you're speaking English to somebody and then you know they'll speak in their other language or whatever and you're just like, man, you just feel so stupid. Yeah. Like, I only know English and they know. And then you talk to them, like, yeah, I know, like, I know German and a little bit of French, a little bit of Italian, and it's like, you know, I barely know English. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Broken English. Exactly. So, but it is, it is uh, impressive. Cool. So another ten years of Silverstein, hopefully. And then we'll see. A few more. Red. No, be, I'll be older and grayer, but it's all right. uh, still be rocking. It's funny. I I remember when I was a, a kid and. Uh, uh, it was an interview with The Offspring I read in some magazine. Okay. It's De Dexter Holland, and I think he was like 30 or something at the time. And, and they said, so, you know, you think you guys got a, another uh, 10 years in you or whatever? And he's like, oh, man, like, like I don't want to be up there doing this when I'm 40. Like, that's just, I, don't, I wish I knew exactly, because I'm misquoting him, but it was something like uh, along the lines of, uh, that's just, you know, pathetic and uh, embarrassing. I don't want to be up there when I'm 40. And here we are. I think think he's probably forty now. Oh, so yeah. at least but they got their own jet and stuff. So yeah, that's true. But but uh, it's it's just funny how your perspective on age and stuff really changes as you get older. Right. You know, you think you think when you're twenty, you think twenty five is old. When you're twenty five, you think thirty is old. When you're thirty, you think you know, and that just goes on and on until you're dead. 